uh, many blessings to you for being a part of the KMT family. Uh, I just real quick, if you are not following this channel uh, on YouTube, please go to the YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button. It doesn't take you but a second to go and do that so you can get these rich teachings that God has given me to uh, in, uh, import into your lives. And if you're not following us on Facebook, go to our Kingdom Minded Thinker page and hit the follow button. Be sure to leave plenty of comments and hearts and thumbs ups uh, throughout the casting of these videos. And if you missed the video, go back and play the replay. All right. So and, it, and it's also uh been a new year and i just want to say god bless you starting off and i love all of y'all and we're going to start off with a word of prayer father in the name of jesus god we ask you to just be present lord in the name of jesus and we ask that you just let your word spread across the nation god and lord help us to remember you all the time not just sometime lord and lord i just want to say i lose receiving hearts open mindsets that's ready for change in jesus name now lord i ask that you cover each and every individual let them receive the word the way you design for them to receive it god let it reach those that are in times of trouble and lord minister to the uh, people and let it be water to a dry place in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So, hey, everybody. Thank y'all for just tuning in. All right. Let's get straight into it. I don't know what happened there. I wasn't doing that. But uh, welcome to KMT, the classroom uh, where the lesson plan is to become a kingdom minded thinker. And whose kingdom? God's kingdom. It's your girl, Annette, a teacher that truly nurses the soul. Somebody may say, well, what does that mean? When you go to the hospital, you're sick, right? What do nurses do? They nurse you back to health. When you are sick and your mind is sick, what does uh, nurses in the Lord do? We nurse that mind back to health. And that's what a, t a teacher that truly nurses the soul does. All right, so let's get right into it. Oh, yep, and this is the first video of the year. Happy 2020, happy new year. And I just want to say I love all you guys again. And this is the first casting of the 2020, uh, 2020 new year for KMT. And I just want to say uh, I'm excited about it. God is truly working in the business of, of healing and, and, and answering prayer. I love all y'all. I can't say that enough because it's just in my heart to just love. All right. So let's get right to it. All right, so um, today's title is Don't Put God in a Box. Somebody say, well, what is she talking about? What does that mean? Why would, what, what is she saying? What is she talking about? Why would you put God in a box? Sometimes in life, because in the past I have, we can put God in a box and not even realize that we're doing it. If you are curious to know if you've done this or is doing this, stay tuned and hang on in there with us and you'll learn something about what I'm saying. Simply don't put God in the box. What does that mean? These scriptures that come to mind that I put, posted and put up here will also help you as well. Um, hey, uh, Mama Teresa, love you. Hey, um, don't put God in a box. I just want to say this before we get started. God is not in your box. You can't put him in a box. But sometimes we as people put the relationship we have. Let me break that down because I hear you. Somebody might be saying, what is she talking about? Don't put God in a box. If you can't put him in a box anyway, the relationship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Don't put the relationship that you have with God our father uh, hallelujah in a box because this th th this messes your life up and see this is what the teaching is about to not do so all right there's some things i wanted you guys to realize if you didn't which i'm pretty sure most of you know what a box is but i just want to give you the definitions of that and the word faith because you'll be hearing me talking about these two things throughout this casting and hey everybody thank you guys for tuning in y'all share this message and spread the word of god i encourage you to go ahead and do so and do it now and hit the thumbs up and like button and start teaching and preaching this word on here with me share your testimony what god has done for you on this week let the people know that god is is not in a box hallelujah all right so look at the word box 
God is not limited. Love you. That is correct. She already on the right path of, of what we going to teach uh, inside this classroom, this lesson. Box, a container with a flat base and sides. So it's closed in, typically square or rectangle and having a lid, like a cereal box. All right, so um, the synonyms, uh, a pack, a packet, a package, a case, a crate, a chest, a trunk, uh, a, cof uh, a coffer. Uh, those are things that when we think of, and you can even think about a UPS box. Hey, Brother Rizal, good to see you. Um, you can even think about a, a, a UPS box. What do they do? They put something inside and they ship it to you type of thing. All right, so if we look at the word faith, faith. Complete tr faith is complete trust and confidence in someone or something. Well, we're not talking about someone or something. We're talking about complete trust in God. You guys, please be sure to share the video and teach this word of God with me. And you don't want to miss this because it's talking about what we as people do or have done in the past and not realizing that we captivated God's, his, 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 his his unlimited power to do things that he told us that we would do in the word and that we are to live by the just uh, live by faith. Who are the just we that are in Christ that are, are on the right side of God. Thank you, Jesus. And see, his word is, 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 it's like a, a, a glass of cold, uh, cool water on a hot summer day when you just thirsty and there's nothing going to quench your thirst, but that water. All right. So let's look at what do we do with things? I want you guys to think about something. This is a question. What do you do with things for Christmas? Uh, like, like the ornaments, the, the Christmas tree, if you put one up, the, the, the outside decoration, the lights and so forth. What do you do with it? You store it in a box. You put it in a box and you store it. So with that mindset and you and, and you have uh, the, the picture of what where we're going with this in your mind, you can't put God up seasonally. Well, what does that mean? Let me break that down for you. On Sunday, you want to come in and you praise and worship God on Wednesday night Bible study. If that's what days your church have it or Friday night, whatever day, day that, that uh, your church has Bible study, you want to bring him out the box. Oh, I believe and I'm trusting in this. Even in situations in your life, um, one moment, God, you can do this. For this, I trust you in this area. I trust you with that because I can literally see what you're doing. But the things that you can't see, the things that you don't know the answer to, like, okay, I, I know God is going to do this for me. And I, well, you do know the answer, correction, but you don't see right off. I know God's going to do this for me. I just can't see. And you pray a prayer of faith and you believe God and you trust God. Can you trust him in every area of your life like you did with certain things? See, God doesn't want to be limited in your life because when we limit God, we put him in a box. When we only talk about God and we only meditate on God two days a week, if that we put the relationship we have with God in a box. When I have something that I need to store in my house, I'll put it in a box. My husband may store it in the computer room or wherever, and I don't have to go back and get it and worry about it, though I know it's there, but I don't have to get it. I don't, I don't pull it out every day because I don't use it every day. If that's the lifestyle that you have with God, that's the wrong lifestyle to have. He needs to be first and foremost in your life and you can't live without him. So he needs to be where you can get to him all day, every day. You can't live without air. He needs to be just like the very air we breathe in. <sighs> Take a deep breath in and out and think about that. Because if you didn't have that, your life support, life would be cut off from you. So we have to have God not in a box. So let's look at a few scriptures and it's talking about faith um, because in order for us to not have God in a box, we got to have some faith people for the things that he told us we could do and we, we will have and how we should live on this side because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Why is that? One reason is because if you don't have faith, you don't have you, you don't trust in God. I mean, you don't you don't believe that God is real because he can. If 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 you read in Genesis, when it talks about in the beginning, uh, God created heaven and earth and he did all these things. If you didn't have faith to believe that. 
you wouldn't believe. So how can you please God if you don't believe what his word says, if you don't do what his word says? See, faith brings us to a, a point where we're able to do something. We're able to put forth work. OK, now, if you don't believe that if you don't have the job right now, hallelujah, and you believe that you're going to get the job, you're going to start going to that building. Now, don't look strange to do nothing weird. Only if God told you to do so, you're going to start going to the building where you want to work at and you're going to go at the time of opening and you're going to put that application in and you just going to show up because you went by faith. You put forth action. You didn't just say, well, God, I believe that this is going to be my job. And you sit at home waiting for somebody to come knock at your door, not saying that it won't happen in the can because God can do anything and he will, but he gives us something to do as well. We have to store up the word of God, not God himself. That is exactly right. That is correct. And Hey, sister, you I love you. When we store up the, let me, let me say something about that. Cause you just stirred something there. When we store up the word of God, we wear it like a, a, a chain on our neck, like a necklace that we never take off. And it, all that word that God has placed on the inside of us from studying it, from teaching it, from learning it, from letting it be on the inside of our lives, from us experiencing and living in it. That's what we store up. We store up the word of God, but we can't store up his work, his power, his, his unlimited power, the things that he can do, the things that he he will do the prayers of the righteous availeth much. We had a, a moment where, and I'm gonna get to the scriptures here. And we had a, a moments and and where we have had to send up prayer for healing, send up prayer for miracles to be worked, for our minds to be changed, and things just on down the line. And when we sent those prayers up, we sent it up to God, and we trust God. And when we turn, when we turned it over to God and truly left it there, God was able to work. God did just what He promised, and His promise is. He'll hear the prayers of a righteous man. And, and if you're not praying a prayer that, that is righteous, God's not listening to that. So you can't pray evil prayers on people. Let me just put that out there because we got some people that's confused. Uh, it, it, that's a bewitchery type of thing. But let's get into it. I got some, some scriptures up on faith. Faith is all throughout this word of God because this is very important. Because in order for us to believe God and his word, we can't put... God in a box with things that we just don't know if it if, or because we can't see because we don't want to put faith into work because we too lazy to believe because I'm gonna tell you something when you don't believe it's a, it's a form of laziness because you have something to do you have to talk to your mind you have to correct it you can't just sit there and let it talk to you and tell you what to do if it's not Holy Spirit speaking and then it's a form of being afraid and having fear but the Bible tells us to fear not you start to visual yourself in the position and believe what God has for you. Hey, sis. Oh, and yes, ma'am. That is totally correct. Hey, sis. Love you, too. Thank you. Um, I just I just want to say this before I read these scriptures. Through, I, I don't know if you're not. Let me encourage you. If you're not in a church where you're seeing lives change, miracles being performed because God is still in the miracle working business, people being healed, things just in God is on the move. Then you need to reevaluate the church that you're in, because we I, I've had some conversation with some folks where they feel like God was that was back then. God is not doing that now. Well, I'm telling you, God is doing that now and going to continue to do so. All right. For, uh, in Matthew chapter chapter 21 verse 22 all things who what uh whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer that's talking to God and he not asking you to say all these big words that you don't even understand that you heard somebody say but you yet don't understand it he said uh, uh ask in prayer believing and ye shall receive he didn't say you might he said you shall receive hey everybody thank you all for coming in but if you shall receive that's just like me coming to you putting a box in your hand putting your a piece of paper in your hand and you just and, and it's, it's just that simple we got to get our faith up and on on this level uh, Romans 10 17 so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God this is what we're doing now we're teaching you about it you're hearing about the word of God now if, after you've heard the word of God and it's in the word you've seen the scripture and you've been taken to it you got to hear that word of God you got to have faith because after you hear it and you start believing it and, and you know that this is God speaking to you I got to come up in this area if you're not already up in an area that you should be in this is what takes you, you your relationship with God 
heart out of the box. Because if you put your relationship with God in the box, that's just how that, that's how, that's how it is between you and God. Now I don't know about you, but I don't want my relationship to be in a box with God where uh, I only uh, believe Him for certain things. I don't believe that He could do this and that. And you have to watch people. Some folks are, are, are look at you, but uh, uh, crazy and say, well, God, even if they saw Jesus walking on water, they wouldn't believe. Uh, it, it, but but it's true. He did. And the word tells us that. All right. So go to Hebrews 11 and six. You guys make notes of this and study it later. I just want to give you some scriptures that it speaks about on faith. But without faith. See, I just talked about this. It is impossible to please him. Who is him? God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we got to look for God. And I love all y'all. Y'all share this message and spread the word of God. I'm encouraging you to spread God's word on today. Uh, we have to look for God. We have to seek him. And know that God is not trying to hide from you. God is not trying to run away from you. But God wants you to look for him. He wants us to find him. I know in the mornings, if my husband is uh, 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 <clears throat> in the bed, I'll, I'll kind of like, okay, there he is. And I put my arm on him because I was looking for him. And then sometimes he get up, he goes in the den or wherever he goes in the house to watch TV. But if he leaves the house and didn't tell me he was gone, I'm going to be up looking for him. Well, you got to be looking for God in a sense like that. We have to search for him. How do we search for him? In his word, believing in his word, doing the things that he say. Well, Lord, I'm looking for you to be in this area. I'm looking for you to show up, God. Hallelujah. All right. So, um. Mark uh, 11, 22 through 24. Uh, but we're just reading this short one, the 22. And Jesus answered, said unto them, have faith in God. Uh, you got to believe in his son, Jesus, because he tells you about God, his father, and having faith in him. Go to James 2 and 19. Now, all these places talk about faith. There must be something about it in the relationship that we have to have with God. You got to have faith in God. James 2 and 19. Thou believest that there is one God. That's God, Jehovah, the father of Jesus Christ. Thou dost doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So they was teaching uh, in church the other night, my, my co-pastor, my uh, first lady of our church. And there's that scripture to go right with what she was saying. She was saying that the, the devil that you believe in, the devil that you trust in, he also believe in God. He know the truth, but you, you, you choose to go that way. So there's that scripture for those that couldn't uh, uh, relate to what she was saying, which I already knew that what she was saying was true because I believed the word when I heard it. But there's the scripture to it right there. All right. So let's go to Hebrews 11 and one. Now, faith is the substance. I'm telling you what faith is. It's scripture. It's the substance of things hoped for. What's hope for? I hope I got the job. I'm hoping for the house. I'm hoping for a, a, a closer relationship with God. That should be top and foremost. I'm hoping for uh, to be able to produce because sometimes we find people in life where there's a, a, a female that wants a child, but not able to produce a child uh, uh, and go through all these measures uh, in life to try to have corrective surgery and things like that. But the, the thing to do is to go to God. God can use the doctor's hand for you to get the right corrective surgery or he can bring instant healing according to thy faith be it done unto you all right so uh just hope for and the evidence of things not yet seen so if i'm hoping for it and that thing shall will and it is gonna come to pass i just gotta hold on to god's word when you have something and you want god to to, to manifest write it down and when you write it down don't forget about it put it somewhere where you can see it or place it in your bible hallelujah and when you place it in the word you don't forget that it's in there because god's gonna bring that thing to pass all right and, and, and when he bring it to pass, that is right for you. He's going to uh, remind you of what he did. Now, see, that's what God does. He does things for us, but he's saying when he do it, don't forget me. People tend to forget God. I w I'm not going to allow a car to make me backslide on God. I'm not going to allow a boyfriend to make me backslide on God. See, there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God but you. You can stop yourself from, from being, having an intimate, that close relationship with God, our father. Hallelujah. All right. So, uh, Luke, um, one and 37, um, 
uh, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. I watched something on Facebook the other day. And when I watched it, I, I believe because of the things that I've experienced and because I know God is real. There was a lady on there. Her arm was drawn up and it would look like a deformed type of situation. And while they was praying, you begin to see the arm, the, the, the bones in it. To, 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 it just stretched and you could see the, the, the like crackling on the outside. You could see that the, the, the skin was and it was stretching and growing and it grew back into place. We serve a God like that. And a God that is in the healing business, if you have a deformness in your family or in the body of your children or in yourself, God will heal you. He will deliver you. He will fix what is needing to be fixed. We just got to have enough faith to trust him. And it, it, and, and it, it pleases God when you believe that he'll do something for you. Uh, Ephesians 2, uh, 8 through 9, but we just getting on verse 8. Uh, you want to read more, you go ahead. It says, for by grace are ye saved through faith. Now, I'm talking to you people that are um, in the faith. Uh, when you give your life to Christ, sometimes the devil try to play with your mind and mess with you and say, you're not saved. My faith tells me I'm saved because I'm lining up with this word. I'm lining up in the word of God. Hallelujah. And see, that's the devil's job. He'll try to make you feel like you're not saved because he can speak to you. That's his job. It doesn't matter if you save or not save. He going to do his job with talking to you, trying to get you to do wrong or get you to not believe. He wants to distract you. So he's going to talk to you. And just because you saved don't mean that he don't try to talk to you because that's just what he does. But it's us that, that are living for Christ that are strong in the Lord. We know that when he speaks we are to speak back loose here Satan get thee behind me I am saved I speak over my mind because I am uh, 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 on the right side of God I am God's child and he is my father and Jesus is my Lord and Savior and see when we talk back and we call and name uh, the name of Jesus and we the blood of Jesus I plead the blood of Jesus over my life a lot of people think it's funny or, or, or may think don't take it serious when 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 you hear somebody talking about that and, and, pro and professing and claiming this. But this is not a laughing matter. This is a serious matter. The blood of Jesus. What does it mean by the blood of Jesus? Hallelujah. Hey, uh, uh, innocence. Blameless. Sinless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blood that was shed on the cross for the sins of the world and, and for your healing, for your deliverance, for your keeping, for your for your chance to, to have a relationship with God, for you to be made right with him. So it we he, he's 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 hallelujah and an he's he's fighting for, he, for you and I pleading with the father for us hallelujah all the time and when we call on him that's how we get to God in your son Jesus name that pleases God we can't leave Jesus out because I'm gonna tell you something you can't get to God without his son Jesus so when Oprah said that there is many ways to God no ma'am and I'm glad to tell you as my brother would say that if you think that you can get to God without Jesus there is no way there is no way to God but through his son Jesus Christ and in order for you to talk to God in order for you to hear from God you must be born again and you must come in the knowledge that Jesus is real he is Lord he saved my soul and when you come in hallelujah and you begin to understand and you begin to feel his greatness his mercy and you have a concrete spirit you begin to know that Jesus is Lord he is real and every time I call on him he answers me he's a friend to the friendless he's a mother to the motherless a father to the fatherless hallelujah and these are not just things to say this is what he truly and actually is there's healing in the name there's power in the name of Jesus hallelujah Proverbs Three and five. Uh, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Man is not going to understand that, that, that if you wasn't walking yesterday after hands have been uh, uh laid on you by somebody that's really and, and truly deep and rooted in God, the gift of healing. Uh, man's not going to understand. See, doctors won't even say it, that we, they, they don't have an explanation for, for, for a miracle. They, they, this person just had cancer and there was at stage four and now they, there's no trace of it. He don't have an answer for it. All they can do is say it's a miracle. But even smart doctors, one that's got plenty of sense, one that's making an intelligent decision, know that there is a God that will heal your body. If he made it, how come he can't heal it? That's the 
question you have to ask yourself because when you said God can't heal and he might not heal you that you just put your relationship and that connection that you have with God in a box hallelujah so if you lean on your understanding, you, you won't get that. Hallelujah. You can't just, just think about what you would think. Well, if I can't see it, if it's not directly in front of me, uh, I, I, I don't know. Well, that's the way the devil wants you to believe. He wants you to think. And he wants your mind to be troubled that way. He wants to get you and beat you up and, and have you just going left, or, left and right. Just like a, a ship without a sail, just tossed in here and there and driven. Wherever the wind blows, that's where you'll blow. Oh, you may have faith because somebody have faith around you but if somebody come around you with doubt you just go for the doubter i mean that's not that you're supposed to stand and stand on the word of god hallelujah um uh hebrews uh 11 uh and one now faith is the substance uh, there is uh I, I, I put it up here twice but it's important because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen so if, if you just because you ain't seen it doesn't mean that it ain't coming and it don't and that it don't exist it may be delayed delayed hallelujah but it won't be denied hallelujah somebody waiting right now on god to move in an area in your life honey i and speak life to your situation it might be delayed but it's not de denied god wants to see how long you're gonna hold on to him when you uh working and hot your belief and your faith get your faith lined up hallelujah hey sister paxton love you sinless blameless he did it just for me hallelujah thank you jesus he did it all just for me thank you jesus that that, that reminds me of a song uh is, he did it all all for me he did it all uh i forgot who said it uh who who sang it uh but uh anyway i'm just i'm thankful uh that he did he did it all just for me all right so just want you guys to think about this faith in God changes everything every area of your life if you just add God to it and his will his way his divine pleasures and, and, uh, and his plan for that area in your life everything in your life must change and it's going to change for the better see some people you your problem is you don't trust god somebody said well i do trust god but do you really trust god because if you trust god you trust him to know that if he say no something's better going to come later on if he say not right now there's too much going on right now for that situation he just wants you to wait a little bit because It'll be greater later. Do you really trust God to the point to where you said, well, God, if it or he or she or whatever it is in my life is not for me, I trust you to remove it because I know you know far more better than I do. Or do you want to hold on to your boyfriend because that's what you see and what you know and what you pick right now? Because if you truly trust God, everything must change. He know that that, that boyfriend you got ain't trying to live right and ain't going to live right. So that, that, that charming, Prince Charming, what people say that you waiting on and waited for he don't know how to treat you because god got something better for you but you don't know that because you only want what's in front of you what you used to trust god trust him to, to to fix your life and your relationship and pray for whoever it is that you got to let go of or whatever it is like that you got to let go of hallelujah and 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 because the word says man ought to always pray and not faint so whenever a situation come up look look at job with and this was talked about last night and i talked about this the other day even in Sunday school look at his lifestyle all those things was happening and he still trusted God and he didn't think he fell to his knees and he prayed this is how we supposed to be in God this is where our faith comes in and our beliefs come in for us to to keep moving to keep pushing forward in life to keep holding on to God because I know God is with me all this may be going on but God is with me this is the test that I'm going through God has not left me and I know that when when the when the teacher is given a test hallelujah they don't talk 
But with this test, God gives us things to pass the test. And if you don't pass the test, it's not God's fault. He gives you his word. Hallelujah. So he even speak when he not speaking through the word of God. He sends your sisters and brothers in Christ to lift you up, to keep you up in prayer. Holy Spirit is with you. You can call on the name of Jesus all the time. This is what he gives us and leaves us with for us to pass these tests and to live this thing that we call life and to, to help us make it into heaven when it's time to go but the choice is yours you got to have faith in God so everything can change if that husband is on drugs if he's an alcoholic if he's a cusser hallelujah he's he, he, he don't want to listen to you or, or whatever you can re read the word sanctified wife sanctified husband apply that word to your life how do you know if he'll be saved just trust God I don't know but he does one or two things gonna happen but when it does you got to accept God's will in his way because he don't force himself up on no one. But the prayer has been prayed for that young man or young woman's life because it could be a woman that's doing this as well. But when it's prayed and you left it and it's in God's hand, you don't play tug of war with God. You don't say, okay, God, I give this to you, but then I take it back. You got to have complete faith. Trust that God has taken care of the situation and, and watch his, his hallelujah, his mercy, his goodness, and everything that he has in store for you work and manifest in your life. Hey, cousin, I love you, Kamitra. Thank you for coming in. And hey, Miss Marsha, how you doing today? Uh, pray everybody's doing great and all is well. All right, so let's get back into the word. All right, so uh, go to Corinthians. Well, you might not have time, but make these notes. And if, if it's going too fast for you, be sure to hit the replay button. You, all, you can always go back and replay the video and share this video spread God's words across uh, across the nation because we are in a time where we have a president and see that's why the Bible said put your trust in no man because man can't save your soul only God can and uh, every soul belongs to God but the soul that sinned shall die so if you are in sin you are not going to live in paradise you're going to be totally disconnected from God then the relationship that y'all have really will be in a box there is no way to get to him that the uh in it's over. So looking at first Corinthians two uh, and five, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So if, if, if you're looking at what's going on today and somebody say, well, our president is doing this and, 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 and this is going to happen and you just get so bombarded and so worried. Here's a scripture that tells you don't put your wisdom and your faith in man. Put your faith in God. Well, the word is going to fulfill itself. It's fulfilling itself now. We're in revelation. But if you if you think about it, the man, man can say, well, we're going to just blow everything up. Well, what does the word of God say? Because God God's going to have the final say. He's going to make the final move. And man can try to do all things that they want to do. But if God don't allow it, honey, it's not going to happen. There can be famine in the land. You could have a, 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 a camp around you where there's no food supply. There is no, no, no money uh, to go around to supply the, the, the tartical items and things that you need. But God said, I shall apply all your needs according to his riches and glory. So that means if somebody else is in poverty and famine, the God I serve service. He, he, he won't allow me to go through that. Why? Because I live by faith and I'm justified by Jesus. Hallelujah. And he paid my ransom. Like the song said, I've been redeemed by his blood. So this must work for me. This shall come to pass. I am what God says I am. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith and not yourselves. It is the gift of God. So salvation is a gift. I heard somebody say salvation is a gift. Yes, salvation is a gift, but you can lose your gift when you choose to leave God. Hallelujah. Because it's it, the, the scripture clearly tells us that if you, uh, uh, let me break it down because some people don't understand this. If you continue to live in sin, shall grace and mercy be with you? God forbid it, which means God is not going to go for that. He, th 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 if, if that was the case, everybody could just say, well, 
I repent of my sin, Jesus, my Lord and Savior, and go out and do whatever they want to do and, and live a, a lifestyle that God told you not to do. Committing adultery, fornication, uh, being on drugs and alcohol, uh, causing problems with your neighbors, uh, using all this kind of uh, reveling and wild party and, and having a, the characteristics of your daddy, which is the devil at that point. It's either you're going to be having the characteristics and the trait of God because you are the son and daughter of God, or you're going to have the characteristics of of Lucifer, which is the devil. You can't be in between. Well, I got some uh, characteristics like God, but if you make me mad, I'm going to cross that line. It does not work that way. And see, that's, that's not having faith in God because I even had a situation and I'm not going to get too deep into it. And it's a loved one. And I love this person dearly. And some things is happening. If, if taken over in the household. And so I, I wanted to. Lynette wanted to go and say some things. And, and, and help with the household. And, and, and you know. Just, just try to help. Because I had already spoke what God had told me to speak. But after that, I wanted to, 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 but the Holy Spirit calmed me down. He said, that's the way man would do it. Allow God to do it. So I prayed. On my way home, God, I was talking to God. And I had got another message. And the house was cleared out. So I'm even thankful in that, that God showed me that, hey, don't, don't, don't put your trust in man. Don't try to handle this the way you would. My ways are better than yours because when I clear out, a house. When I get the devil out, he he he, there, he he's gone. He ain't no coming back unless somebody opened the door to allow him to be back in. All right. So Second uh, Corinthians five and seven. We for we walk by faith and not by sight. That's that part of faith that I was telling you about. That if if you can believe it, you can have it. Uh, and, and and you you don't have to see it, but you just envision it. And so this is why I say to write things down. Hallelujah. If you can't see it, write it down. That helps you to say, okay, it's written. I got it on paper and I know that it's going to come to pass. God made man and woman to, to, to be companions to each other. So if you don't have a wife right now, or if you don't have a husband right now, because he made two part two, uh, two parts to this thing, husband and wife, that means born a man, born a woman together. God will send you somebody. What you need to do is Give yourself some time to get to know God. Be married to God first and thank him and put your order in. I heard my pastor say this and I, I, I believe it because this is how God works. Put your order in with God. Write it down how you want him or her to be. God knows how to put somebody with you and give you just what you need. Somebody that's compatible to you. A lot of times we get in these uh, situations or people get in these marriages and God didn't tell you to get in it. But you told yourself to, so you have to, uh, um, you have to, 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 to take what you've done and pray about it and ask God to help you. Now, both of y'all <clears throat> are just, one's just not going to live right if he leave. Goodbye. Live a life in peace. All right. So, uh, James 2, 14, um, what do it, it profit my brethren, though a man say he had faith and have not works. Can faith save him? Okay, so when we're talking about this, hallelujah, and, and listen to this. If you say you have faith, but you have no works, Lynette, what you talking about? If I got faith that if I lay hands on my, my own self or, or my children, that if God is going to do whatever I'm asking him to do. Like the time I was, uh, and I testify about it still, that when I prayed and asked God to heal me, I, I couldn't talk. Uh, some, some things was going on when I was sick, but I didn't want to take any medicine. I just wanted to feel the presence and the power of God because I knew and know he's able to do it. And trusting God, if I didn't get up and do what the, the just, just hearing the, the voice on the radio said, I wouldn't have had that experience. I felt a supernatural thing happen. See, this is why I'm teaching and preaching to you because I know what God has done to me. So if people can look at me and say, oh, she crazy. That didn't really happen. That couldn't happen. You better watch your mouth because I know what God has done for me. And somebody just may have count me out, but I'm going to tell you something. God hadn't counted me out. So that's the blessing of God. Man can count you out all he want to. But when you have God on your side, you don't care if somebody believe you or not. You can tell somebody that you saw manna fall from the sky. Bread, fell, uh, bread uh, was falling from the sky because of prayer that somebody else prayed. And man probably be like, well, yeah, that ain't happening some she, she crazy no you're crazy because you don't believe what god did because he he, he he's, he's he can do anything 
And if he feed the birds and take care of them, what more are we? Hallelujah. So if it, when I say faith and not do anything, if I didn't ever lay hands on myself, if I didn't ever get up and put that word on top of my head, on my chest and stand on the word and have that crazy faith to, to, to believe that at this point, God was going to do something for me. Then I wouldn't experience what I experienced. God talks to us in dreams. He talks to us in visions. God, God, he speaks to us through Holy Spirit in his word. He speaks to us and he's talking to you now. He's telling you to believe and to trust me. I, 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 I want to be a, I, I want to be whatever it is you need me to be. I want to be in this area in your life. I want to be in that area. I want to be in every area of your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. So let's talk about this. What we've just taken in talking about faith, talking about living uh, for God and what pleases God. So now we know what being in a box is and having a box relationship with God. Now we know what having faith is. And, and see, some people I've heard and I think I've said it uh, when you in a box, you, you and I'm not talking about it in a good way because you don't need to be exposed to the world and just be out and just doing everything. And at that point, you need to be in the box, in the box of holiness. All right. But I'm talking about in a way where you, you, you can't think outside the box. All I see is what's in front of me and you don't think of a way to get out. If you are, um, uh, and it is my testimony. If you are um, uh, like if you if you can't stop drinking uh, or whatever the case be, or if you are on drugs and you and you can't truly do anything, uh, you, you 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 all you see is what's in these four walls and you, four walls and you feel like you captured in. Well, God wants you to come out of that box because outside the box. Uh, when, when you're in a box of sin is holiness. You got to come out of sin and get into holiness. So it's either you in in, in sin or you in holiness. So uh, to talking about what God can do, what God has done. So when people tell testimonies and thank you all for tuning in, y'all share this video, spread this word. Hallelujah. But when people tell testimonies, and God has given us spirit of discernment to know when somebody is falsifying something. But when a testimony is gone forth, like uh, Travis Green, I love his testimony and his testimony bless my life. And you guys, if you hadn't heard it, you need to go hear it. He was speaking about now. He was, I think, four years old and fell from it, it was he was really young. He fell from the window of a four story building, but his body never hit the ground. And I truly believe that. Uh, hallelujah. Because we serve God that, 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 that loves us. He loves his children. And when he never hit the, his body hit the ground, but his soul never hit the ground. And when he was uh, out and they pronounced his de him dead, his mama, I guess she let him know what they were doing on one side. But what he was doing on the spiritual side, see, if you don't believe that there's a real God, then just go work at a hospital or a nursing home. That soul that's in that person is it, it, it had he or she has to go somewhere and they will die. Watch somebody die right in front of you. It'll wake you up. My God, if you don't believe you will start believing because at that moment that could have been you that could have been me that could have been anybody and so we got to realize that it's talking through that, that we have to have faith that we are going to make it to heaven because we're doing all we know how to live right on this side but in his testimony he 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 and it's real because he said he couldn't see it was so bright he couldn't see the face uh, of Jesus but when he was talking to him he asked him do he want to come I'm, I'm paraphrasing because I can't remember exactly how he said it do you want to go with your mom or do you want to stay here with me and he he was thinking like I'm gonna go stay with my I'm gonna go with my mom because babies love their mother uh children love their parents and fathers and so he wanted to go back to his, his mom and, and she was calling and praying and talking to God and he came back he sent him back he, but but he asked him what was his name Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He asked him what was his name and he told him his name was Jesus Christ. You have to believe because God is real. Jesus is real. And there is going to come a day, children, men and women and children of God, that if you're not ready, if you're not living a life that's pleasing to God, you will be left behind. Your soul will be lost and your faith in God that you thought you were supposed to have that you didn't have. 
that you're thinking about now, it's going to be too late. This is why we're making the cry, the cry right now. You got to come in. You got to come in from where you are. You got to come up and get close to God. You must be born again. You must come into this ark of safety. What is the ark of safety? The boat of righteousness and believing in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And you must be born again to inherit the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because if you don't, you're not going to make it in. If you just look at your hands, if you just look at your body and, and, and look at just, just look at yourself in the mirror and don't go crazy with it. But just look and say, is there something on the inside that's keeping me alive? What I'm seeing on the outside is not the real me. Like I said, a lady at my job was talking about the devil wants to distract you. He wants to distract you with what you can see. He don't want you to see the real what's not seen. Hallelujah. But there's a story in the Bible that I want you to relate to. Hallelujah. And, and, and listen and take it in. Because in, in the book of Matthew, in the 14th chapter, it starts talking about John before we get to verse 14. It talks about John. And, and who is John? John is uh, uh, the son of um, uh, Elizabeth. Uh, and, and, and his father was the one that the angel uh, closed the mouth and he couldn't talk because he didn't want to speak on because uh, he was in doubt and so forth. But John was killed for this thing. And so let me tell you this. Some some of you will die uh, because you are teaching this word and people hate the word of God. But you got to know that if you are um in the will of God, God is going to protect you. But if it's your time to go, I'd rather leave with God than leave without him. Because I'm going to tell you, in hell, you will lift your eyes if you leave here without God. All right. So it, talking about Matthew 14 and John and he was killed and somebody wanted his head on a uh, charger. They wanted it. The, the, and so he was cut. Uh, his, his head was cut off. And they told Jesus about this. But if you skip down to verse 14, we're in Matthew chapter 14, verse 14. It says, and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. So he went and saw people and was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick. So he went on continuing to do his work. And I know that in our heart. Some things come up sometimes where it hurts us when we get news. It's not pleasing, but we got to. That's how the devil distracts you. You got to keep moving. You got to keep doing God's work. All right. So verse 15. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place. And the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves uh, uh, victuals. Uh, verse 16. But Jesus said unto them, they need not depart. Give them to eat. Uh, and in verse 17. And they said unto him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, bring them hither to me. So in this, think about faith. They didn't put Jesus in a box and what he could do. Now he had to leave his own, his very own and start going afar off for him to do his ministry. Why? Because people that was just looking at him that knew him did not believe. And sometimes you have to, a lot of times you have to come out from among them that just think that they know you as uh, Janetta, which is my nickname or, or, or Netta and so forth and go where people actually believe in God. Cause when, when you don't believe and when you're not, I didn't believe. I'm telling you, it, it'll hinder some things. But if I believe and I prayed the prayer and I know God is able and that he's already done it, all you have to do is receive. You can't look at me for what you know me as, as your cousin or your sister or or, or, or your auntie and so forth. Because at this moment, I'm uh, uh, at, at all moments, I'm a child of God. But in that moment, your faith needs to be in God and that he's working through his servant. But they told him uh, that they only had this. And so in that, he, uh, he he said, just bring it to me. But they did something. They brought it to him. Uh, and the verse 19 says, and he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and two fishes and looking up to heaven. See, this is what happens when we look up to God. See, all our help comes from the Lord. I will look to the hills. Where is the hill? It's up. We got to look up to God from which cometh our help. Uh, and, and the word... Uh, hallelujah. Y'all, let me slow down just a little bit. The word came last night and it was fired to me because it's all in the message that, that was going to be taught and to uh, teach today because the Holy Spirit gives us a word and it's kinder spirit. So we all get the same word and, or, or just about the same in likeness. Hallelujah. And he looked up to heaven. He blessed and break. Uh, and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. Verse 20. And they did all 
uh, eat and were filled. <clears throat> and they took up the fragments that remained 12 baskets full. Verse 21. And they uh, that and they that had eaten uh, were about 5000 men besides women and children. All right. So looking at that, hearing the word of God, you got two fishes and five loaves of bread. And you got 5,000 men that have eaten off two fishes, five loaves of bread, not including the women and children. You talking about a God that can do anything. If you down to your last penny and you know you're not a robber of God, but if you are a robber, you need to get that thing right and start paying God back. Make a... a, a, a a decree and declare and talk to God, make that thing right and start paying God back and, to, and, and, uh, and letting God know that you won't rob him anymore. And God will, he will heal your land and he will hear, he will hear you and heal your land. But if you are a, a, a tire payer and you do what God says and his word uh, is, is, is water to you because it, and it's food to you because you're hungry, you know that God is, he'll bring money to your doorstep. He'll use people to put money in your mailbox. And they want no funny business or nothing like that. He'll he'll bring he'll 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 and he'll sign it and, and it'll be from God. It'll be from the angel of God. Uh, it has happened. And God will send people to you in a store and just say, well, I want to pay for your food today. Or he'll tell you to meet somebody somewhere for you to be a blessing. But God does this and he supplies all your needs according to his riches and glory. And he has all and he and he doesn't run out. And so this is the blessing part. So if you at your last dime right now, just know that God is going to take care of it. If he take care of the birds and, and every insect and every animal and, and make sure that they are fed, then what more are you and I and we're made in his image? You got to get up and you got to do something. You got to start believing. You got to start speaking life to dead situations. If you broke, stop saying I'm broke. Start saying I'm rich. My father is rich and I he has a cattle of a thousand hills and more and what Whatever all that you need to say and remember that God is and he was and he is to come. And so he's got everything that you need. Whatever you need, God's got it. Hallelujah. And just start speaking that on yourself. All right. So looking at verse uh, 22. Uh, and straight Jesus and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship. Now this is the second part I want you to hear about because uh, even in this situation, let, let's just get to it so you can hear about it. Because people they they want to put what Jesus can do and what God can do in a box. They want to put that relationship of belief in a box. You don't believe God will save your son or daughter. You don't believe that God will, uh, 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 will keep your car working just a little bit longer so that you can make it to work so that you can get a paycheck to get a new one. You don't believe that God will raise your credit score. This is hallelujah. This is for somebody that, that has had problems with your credit. Hallelujah. Cause I'm a firm believer and I'm a witness. Ask God, what is it that he want me to do? Is, is this, a, is this the right house for me? Is it not? Cause my credit score wouldn't go up until I start seeking God about it. Nothing I did would raise that score. My husband is a witness to that. But when we got in where God wanted us to be and get in and moved where he wanted us to move location and, and everything, Cause he wanted us to have the best hallelujah. And I thank him for it. He said no at that moment to, uh, the, to, to a, a certain residents that we was trying to get. And we just kept trying and God just kept blocking, kept blocking. But I thank him for blocking because now I'm able to enjoy what he truly has and had for me. And so if your credit score just won't go up, we serve a God that'll get in there and just touch those numbers and shoot the score up. You got to trust God and believe God just like that. Well, I serve a God that, uh, because my sister was at the church um, and the testimony came uh, she was in a car accident and she was paralyzed from hip down and when they went in there and laid hands on her she said that she could feel heat and when mama prayed for her she began to, to, to feel heat because healing was taking place and when healing was taking place she walked out hallelujah that's the God we serve but you must believe you must have faith in God and in verse 22 through 25, in, in, in the same chapter of Matthew, chapter 14, it's talking about, uh, and, and you can read it. I'm just going to try to speed it up here a bit. But uh, it's talking about Jesus uh, telling them to get in a ship. And when they were in the ship, uh, and, and it's in verse 23, and he, uh, when he went, 
<clears throat> when and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. So when you are going through stuff, you got to come out among people. You got to go and get in there, that 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 area, that prayer closet. He that dwells in a secret place of the Most High shall abide under the under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalms ninety one. You got to get in your secret place with God. Don't let nothing stop you. And I'm gonna tell you something about being in a secret place. The devil try to make your phone ring. He'll try to make the children act up. He'll try to keep you busy or let something happen. But you got to have that, that, that understanding and turn your phone off. Text your husband or your wife if you're a man. Uh, if you got to, just tell, I'm going to my secret place with God. Not that you're trying to put it on the forefront and announce it to everybody. But you got to have that one-on-one -on -one time with God. You got to come out. And, and, and he went up. Because anytime you go into a, a place with God, you're going into a high place. And so in order for you to get to that high place, it's got to be a secret place with just you and God. Because if everybody is around and everybody talking and everybody doing this and that, the distractions and stuff will happen. So he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. So you, this is between you and God. Your husband can't die for you women. Uh, your wife can't die for you men. Your children can't die for you parents. Can't Ain't nobody die for you and see God and be judged by God but you. All right. So uh, when the evening was come, he was there alone. All right, so 24, but the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, uh, for the wind was contrary. So it was back and forth. And verse 25, in the fourth, <clears throat> hmm? Hmm? yes, I'm on verse 25. Oh, sorry. Oh, there we are. Sorry. Thank you, honey. Okay. Uh, then, uh, this is 22 through 25. All right. So uh, th what I just read, sorry, I didn't change the screen over. I was, uh, hallelujah. I need to be slow down because this word is, it's when you become uh, one with God, it's fire and, 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 and everything is, who just is it's just that much better. All right. So I just read 22 through 24. I'm on verse 25. Now it says, and in the fourth, um, uh, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. Now I want you guys to think about something. When somebody tells you that they believe that Jesus walked on water and you just said, well, I don't know how I can't walk on water. I just don't believe you just messed up because I'm going to tell you something there. Jesus, he, and we can do all things through Christ that strengthen us. And I'm crazy enough to believe that if God wanted us to walk on water again and you have faith in God and he told you to meet them and him there now on water, he will do it again. If he, uh, Ty Tribbett, if he did it before, he can do it again. God is not stuck in time of old. God is omnipresent. That means he was then, he is now, and he is in the future. We can't count God out. We can't say, well, we put God in storage and he's stuck in 1967. No, we can't. Or... or, or 2000 BC. No, we can't because God is everywhere. That's why we have to always acknowledge him and he will direct our path. Now, if we, if he wasn't with us at present hand and wasn't going to be with us in the future, why would the word say always acknowledge him and he will direct our path? Stop putting God in the box. And when he said that we can receive Holy Spirit and it's the gift of tongues, it's the gift, it, 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 it's like fire. That That is for us now. So when you see somebody speaking in tongues and it's of God and it's for has come or hands being laid on the sick and they shall recover or, or miracles being worked and mindsets have been changed or people coming with concrete spirits and just and, and being fulfilled because they are so hungry. There's a burning in the stomach and there you don't want like the song say no peanut butter and jelly. You just want your soul to be saved because you're burning on the inside for the word of God. And that's a spiritual hunger and there's nothing that can fill it. That's what I'm talking about when Jesus walks on water. Can you see the unseen? Can you think and have faith in the, uh, the, the, what man may call the impossible? Because there is nothing impossible with God. There is nothing too hard for God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Go to um, verse 26. Verse 26. All right. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it is a spirit. 
See, they didn't know what it was. And, and they cried out for fear. And this is not a time to be in fear. When you don't recognize something, just cry out to the Lord uh, and ask him to help you uh, and to, to let you see what it is. All right, verse 27. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Verse 28. Uh, and Peter answered uh, him and said, Lord, if it be thou. So he's saying, Lord, if it's really you. Lord, if it's you. I'm paraphrasing. Bid me to come unto thee on the water. Let me come out there where you at. I just want to be close to you. I want to come out there. If you're walking on water, I got faith in what I'm seeing that you'll do it for me that I can do it. But see, the word says that great, we'll do greater things than this. And we have to apply our faith to the word of God and act upon what God has told us to and just go out and do what his word says do spreading that word huh, how, how do you know if somebody's lives will be changed we don't know but we know that if we give them the word they've had opportunity to meet God that may have been that person's last chance and if you didn't do what you're supposed to shame on you because God tells us to do something all right verse um, 29 and he said come so when when the word when he spoke the word that 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 made the surface area for him that were his words his words were the stepping stone he could step on the word because he, Jesus simply said come and when he, Peter was come down out of the ship he walked on the water to go to Jesus when Jesus says come unto me and he said, oh, not some that are heavy laid. And, and, and he letting you know he's going to give you rest. But you got to walk on his word. We got to have faith and stand in the word. We got to stand on the word of God. Every step we take, every move we make, we got to be tangled up and tied up in the word of God. Because when he spoke the words, when he gave a command for him to come, he stepped out. It didn't say Peter was afraid to step out. It just says when Peter came, when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water and as long as Jesus says to do something give you permission to do it all you got to do is say if he brought me to it he'll bring me through it and know that God is with you all right so uh but when we when he saw the wind boisterous he was afraid now this part says he was afraid but when he first stepped off that boat his faith let him know that if i could just get to him my my my, my situation a change what situation the water up under me it may have currents and, and total uh to, total um Things going down there that will just suck me under and make me uh, fall and kill me and eat me up. But if I just get to him, things will change. He'll make water be still. He'll make the winds that's blowing and, and causing you to be like the palm tree when the wind is blowing hard. He'll make the wind stop. The sea obey. That's the kind of God we serve. But when that was happening and he, his face was leading him to him and he said, if I could just get to Jesus, things would change. Moving water will stand still. That's just that's just how we have to believe in faith with God. But verse 30 is when you see he was afraid and beginning to sink. When he got to him, he looked around and he started. He got afraid and he began to sink, saying, Lord, save me. But if I could just get to Jesus, if I call on his name, I can say, Lord, save me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So you guys be sure. It says. Oh, anyway, be sure to, to read that because when he first stepped out, he was like, Lord, if it's you, allow me to come. But if it's not, you know, if, if it wasn't God, he wasn't going to be able to go. But he had enough faith to say, if I get out this boat, because if you get out the boat in some water, you got to know that you're going to sink. But if you see Jesus and you truly looking at what he's doing. And, and when I say see Jesus now, I'm saying seeing Jesus in in in, in healing, seeing his works in uh in his manifestation in teaching, seeing everything that all the things that he's doing, then we know that this is God. And there's no need to be afraid. He says, but when he saw the wind bolsters, that's when he become afraid. And sometimes when we stepping out on faith and we right there at the brink of getting what we need, we'll start looking left and right and we'll hear sounds and winds and things and what distractions. And we become afraid because of what man may come put in your ear and whisper to you. But that's not a time to be afraid. But when you get afraid, do what he did. Call on Jesus saying, save me, Lord. 
All right, verse 31. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? So Jesus was talking to him after he brought him up to save him, letting him know if you had just kept your eyes on me. No matter what man was saying, no matter what the outcome is, whether because your body may need healing, whatever it was, what was your what did your doubt come in at? Because I had it, I had already told you to come. I had already healed you. I had already filled you with the Holy Spirit. I had already told you that this was yours and that, that, that for you to go grab it and have it by faith. I had already said all these things to you. But what did your doubt come in at? What happened to you that made you doubt God? To have little faith. We got to have big faith in God. And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. So the wind stopped. I believe it was a test time of thing, uh, uh, type, of, uh, type of thing, if you really look deep down into it. Because sometimes when you look left to right, you get distracted. Uh, verse 33, and then they, uh, and then, then they that were in the ship came and worshiped him, saying, of a truth, thou art the son of God. All right. So at that moment, they was believing in God. And see, in your life, there are people, there will be people that will say, girl, that didn't really happen. You playing, you crazy. If you told them you had an out-of-body experience in your sleep with, at the age of 16, they're not going to believe nothing like that because it didn't happen to them. God knows what you can handle and how much you can handle when you can handle it. Uh, he's not going to come and, and do this, and he knows that your mind is not capable and ready to handle what, he ha what, what he's doing. But he also do things to, to scare you and wake you up. And I'm not talking about scare you like Booger Man scare you. Ooh. I'm talking about scare you to life, wake you up to know that he is God and he is real and he does exist. So he'll allow things to happen in your life. So when you come out of that situation, the only thing you can do and say is nobody but God brought me through this and brought me through that. All right. So looking at what he was doing and there's no stepping stones under there. That's just water. The stepping stones was when he said, come, he was able to walk on the word of God. And when he took his eyes off, of what God said to do and not focus, he began to sink. But instead of him going all the way down, he immediately start calling on Jesus to save him. And that's what you need to be doing right now. Calling on him now while you have breath in your body, seeking him now while he may be found. Cause it's going to come a day in time. Hallelujah. And the time is near people that it's going to be a day in time where you're going to call on Jesus and, and, and you're going to be looking for him and you're going to be wishing that you had to just listen to your sister that came to you and told you that Jesus is real and that you need to get your life in order. But you told her you was all right. You're going to wish you had to listen to that brother that had held that sign up over there by the bridge and saying Jesus is the way. You're going to wish you had to pay attention in church instead of being on your cell phone, thumb, thumb and Facebook and YouTube channels and whatever else you're doing. You're going to wish that you could take back the moments that, to get to know God that you missed because you was too busy with your job. Too busy with the children, too busy with the cares of life to, to trust God and get to know him better because your life was just so busy. You go wish that you had just turned around and, and opened the door because Jesus was knocking at the door and let him in. And you go wish that you didn't say all the negative things about the children of God and, and causing other people to be detoured from God because every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But. Are you going to be in that number that he's going to rapture up? Or are you going to be in the number that's left behind to be stuck here in trials and tribulation and, and that period or whatever? Are you going to be uh, uh, with God and resting in the, uh, in the breast of Abraham in the bosom of Abraham? Or are you going to be in a tormented state? Because if you read Revelations and, and I'm, I'm starting to um, to. Uh, be in the knowledge of revelation because it's a book that you have to be prayed up before you read uh, the whole Bible, but you really need to be prayed up to read that book. Uh, and so y'all pray for me as I get started on reading it. If you don't come into this right now, give God whatever it is right now. God can deliver you from lesbianism. I, I, I we have witnesses at uh, a witness at our uh, church. He can deliver you from drugs and alcohol. He can deliver you from yourself. Anything that's not righteous. 
give God, you give him your heart today. All right. So looking at another scripture, uh, first Peter five and seven, I just wanted to give you this because this is what God wants you and I to do. He wants us to cast all. He didn't say some. He's not a God to say, I'm just going to take care of your finances, your, 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 your relationship problems. You can fix that yourself. No, God wants you to cast all. Oh, your cares upon him for he careth for you. The devil don't care for you. So why go tell everybody your business, especially on Facebook and different places? Why tell everybody uh, what you're going through uh, instead of telling the right person? And, and that's God. Why? Why giving your cares to man? Man can't do nothing for you. And the wrong people will hurt you and harm you. No matter how many painful uh, paths they are, they are, God guarantees you make it through God. Yes. He will make a path for you to, uh, have a way of escape. God always opened the door for your way of escape. Praise God. And thank you for that brother Rizal. <clears throat> All right. So let's talk about a few things real quick, uh, that we put in a box, uh, things that you put in a box, your relationship, that's, that's first and foremost with God. You shouldn't be doing that. You put your, the, your problem that, with your spouse uh, in a box. Like God can't fix your spouse, save him or her, change their lives by you being an example because you choose to do things your way. Well, I'm going to get them back. I'm going to get her back. I'm going to teach him or her a lesson. Well, I'm going to encourage you now that you are ready to, 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 you need to get on the right path because if you're on that path, you're on the wrong path because you can't teach a grown man or woman a lesson. Only God can. And the only way that you'll get him or her to truly listen to you and to truly want to follow you is you got to live the life that you singing about in your song. And that's living for Jesus Christ. He, they need to see God all up in there and, and tests going to come and, 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 and all that kind of stuff. And they may even do stuff on purpose to, to, uh, to try to see if you will fall or faint or fade. But you got to stand, stand on the word of God and stand strong. And when trouble come, you need to be on your knees and praying. And when God takes you up high, the more, the, the, the higher he elevates you, the more you need to go down on your knees and pray. So relationships is something that people put in a box with God that, that, that they, 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 they don't believe that God will fix and do. Uh, healing is one thing. People don't believe that God will heal their body from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. God made you. So he's going to heal you when you ask him to be the will of God for you to be healed. That's why his by his stripes, the word tells us, and this is what we live by, by his stripes, we were healed by his stripes. We are healed by his stripes. We will be healed. Hallelujah. You have to believe it. All right. So healing in the box. And these are things that you shouldn't put in the box. Uh, your relationship with God and your spouse and your children, uh, just, just your faith period. Those, those are, these are things that you, these are just some small things that you may not realize it, but when you don't believe God will change the situation, you are putting it in a box and the lid is on it. And it's not, uh, and it's not, uh, where you can t t to have your faith. You don't need to put your faith in the box. It's not time to be in a box for that. Your faith needs to be outside the box so people can see what God is doing in the healing and the miracle work and that God is, is wanting to, to use you to do. God wants to use us. And I don't know about you, but I get excited when God chooses this vessel. So that's the prayer you need to pray. This is the prayer that I, I, I pray I, I, that when I was coming into getting right and want God to do more in my life. Lord, make me the willing vessel. And even now, pray that prayer, because if you if, if you're not equipped to do something that he wants you to do, you got to pray, God, make me the willing vessel so that, that, that you can get the glory and use me. God, it's a privilege to be used by God. And it's just so great. He don't just use you to use you up. He's used you for his glory, but there's benefits in being used by God. My God, if you could just come in and just see and, and taste of his goodness, hallelujah, your life will never be the same. Change will happen and your life will begin to just change for the better. So don't put God in the things that he can do in your life in a box. If you, if you are sick, 
God can and will heal you. Speak it over your mindset. I am healed. If you are having problems with your children, these children are going to be obedient and you got to do your part. You got to believe and they are going to be the children of God and he's got to work for them to do anything that they do that's outside of Christ shall and will fail. I speak that over my children's life. You should speak that over yours and they will always remember God and need to be near the cross because they need to realize that all things are possible through God. Hey, mom and dad, love you guys. Now, these are my two uh, leaders that have come on here. And when I say uh, have have the faith that, that to just that, that God can heal and do anything. These people have, have have changed my life by being perfect examples. And they show me a pattern of God that, 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 that they live for God because he can do all things and, and, and we can do all things through Christ that strengthen us. But you must believe in God. So just to give a replay of what we've been talked about so far, we can't put God in a box. What does that mean? Nothing that we give to God needs to be in a box. Well, he might do it. He might not. And you can't take God out seasonally and, and want God to do something just when you want to call on him. Well, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to take him out on Sunday and Friday night. And then, you know, you, 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 you only pull them out just like Christmas. When you got a Christmas tree, you don't pull it out all year long. You just pull it out when you want to use it. That's not how we ha uh, we're supposed to treat God. God needs to be out where you can see him and he needs to be somewhere where, uh, in our heart. That's what the Sunday school lesson is teaching about. A place for the art. And you guys that are not going to Sunday school, you are missing the teachings. You are missing your growth. You are missing out on a lot in Sunday school class. It is what teaches us and where you can ask questions, where you can grow and learn that's just like in school if you don't come to class you can't learn to pass the test and we got we got to be in sunday school but God has a place uh, in, in our lives that, that he wants complete place in. And he don't want nothing else to take that up. And we must give our hearts to God. And it was talking about in the Sunday school lesson, a place for the ark. Uh, uh, and if you translate that, it's simply talking about a place for God, his presence. And it was talking about, and I'm not going to get too deep into it because it just blessed my soul. And I just, I enjoy it because they, 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 they set all these things up for God to come. Hallelujah. But when he come down, he he was so strong. It was a cloud of smoke, but, but, but it was, it, it, he, he went outside the box. He was all up in the temple. Hallelujah. Y'all need to come to Sunday school. That's all I'm going to say. We're going to move on forward. But God is saying, trust me. Do you trust God? Do you truly trust him to be the, your, your, your father and that, that he's going to take care of everything that you need? He's going to supply all the things that you need in life. Now, we can ask God for a million dollars, but God know more than half of y'all. If he gave you the money, you will leave him tomorrow for the million dollars and you put your trust in Monday uh, in money. I'm sorry. I was reading something. She says, skip Sunday school. Stick to. OK. All right. We're not going to pay attention to that. Lucifer is Satan. But anyway, uh, Sister Pax, hey, man, love you, sis. But all right, because, you know, when the devil going to always try to be present. But we loose you right now in the name of Jesus to go back where you come from. Hallelujah. And I got faith in God that you're going to get this word, whoever you are. And you're going to turn, turn your life around. And you're going to go to Sunday school. And you're going to get the true teachings and the true word of God. Because God is real. And brother or sister, whoever you may be, if you don't give your life to God today, if you don't turn around, Around, then your soul will be lost hallelujah and we got to just back to the word we got to trust God trust that he will uh, to deliver you and make a way for your escape uh, of all situations and sometimes you get yourself in trouble but you are but we got to remember that you will trust God to make a way of escape all right. So uh, uh, the prayers of the righteous avail as much. That's why we trust God. If, if you go to church, they can grease you down and oil you down all day long. But if you don't receive what God has given his prophet to speak over your life, then it doesn't do you anything because she's done what she's supposed to do. God has given you the opportunity to know that he's going to change the situation. But if you don't believe, you must believe you got to have faith to listen to the word of God, to listen to the prophet of God 
to listen to what's being said to you uh, and, and you have a spirit of discernment to know it's right. But see, God will get all up in your business, but he only give you bits and pieces so that your faith can be elevated. But if they grease you down and oil you down today and you go back out there and doubt God tomorrow, you just killed whatever God was trying to do for you. That's why he shut the mouth of uh, John's father because he didn't. He, he was in disbelief that after all these years, we've not had a kid. Could, could this really be done uh, type of thing? And so we have to make sure that we don't speak on. Um, bad on what God has given us or, or somebody else. That's why whenever something's going on, you have to separate yourself from a lot of people when you go into your quiet place. Hallelujah. So God is saying simply trust me. Do you trust God that he's got a place for us to go to for us that's living right for us that's, that's doing all we know how to spread his word for us that, that, that that's, that's believing in his son Jesus Christ and doing the healing ministries of Jesus Christ uh, whether it be from mindsets whether it be from uh, sick whether it be from the the, the, the uh, curses and so forth. Do you believe what God has for you? Um, when, when he says, when Jesus said, uh, in my father's house are many mansions, I go there to prepare a place for you. And where I go, ye may, there ye may be also. Do you believe that there is a heaven and hell? Because there is truly one. And we have to choose now, this day, while we have life on the inside of us. That we love God, that we accept his son, Jesus. Hallelujah. And we got to keep moving. All right. So that's what, what God wants you to do. He wants you to trust him in total trust, complete trust, not halfway. All right. So when you trust God, like this is a new year. And don't make a New Year's resolution. Make a new year change. God, I want you to help me. So when you trust God, you begin to come into the 2020 year. With a, with a clear vision. My husband said something and it stuck with me uh, and, it's, and I've heard it here and there other places. But when we ask God to help us and this is a new year, ask God to give me 2020 vision with, with whatever is in front of me. Because if you got a relationship that's wrong, God help me to see it for what it really is so I won't fall in this trap. If that job is not the job for you, because some people on some jobs, they'll ask you to do dishonest things. And when they ask you to do so, you got to ask God, Lord, what do you want me to do here? And you got to step out on faith and trust God that if they try to fire you tomorrow for being the honest person, you know that that job is not for you in the first place. Uh, it, uh, whatever it is that, that needs some clear focus view on, which is everything in your life, we got to have the viewpoints of God. 2020 vision is a good vision. That means you can see near and afar off, like my husband say. So we got to have that mindset and that, that, that vision point. So when we see the devil coming, we can see him from afar off. And when he's close by, we can recognize that devil and we can uh, start praying and talking to God and uh, and ministering to, to the person that he's into, asking God to have mercy on them and giving them a chance to come and meet God and taste of his goodness. Because we all want to spread what God, uh, us the saints that have uh, experienced God, and his, his mercy, his love. Ain't no love like the love that God gives us. And when we experience all these things, God puts on the inside of us total and complete trust and that's just that's just the bottom line there's no no needing to add anything to that we just begin when we love God and we begin to 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 experience his 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 holiness his righteousness because he's the holy of holies all right so uh, when we experience his greatness and, and that love is on the inside of us we have a glad heart to the word when the word finds us we are glad about it hallelujah but um we be, we just trust God because we know that he's going to take care of everything. He's going to take care of it all. All right. So we've already talked. So this kind of knocked my last talk out for it. But we just totally trust God. Let me encourage you. If you are not trusting God and you are doubting God that he'll do this or that for you. The, the, the sooner you start believing God and trusting him for it, the sooner things will change. But you must be born again. You must believe in his son, Jesus Christ. You must believe that he uh, uh, that, that he came and he died for the sins of the world and God raised him up on the third day. You must believe these things and you must be filled with the Holy Spirit to keep you and guide you each and every day. It's the Trinity, God, the Father, God, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we have to have all three to live on this life, uh, uh, on this side of life, uh, to, to live a lifestyle that's pleasing to God. So we can't get around these areas. 
And I hope all y'all are enjoying this word. Y'all spread this video, uh, this, this message. Hit that share button and hit the thumbs up and likes and so forth. And y'all leave comments. Tell about God's goodness, what he's done for you, the experience that he's healed you, uh, the experience that you've uh, experienced when you've seen a miracle being worked or somebody got a, uh, at my church, they said somebody was had a sentence to, in, in, in jail, was fitting to get a long sentence, but God shortened the time because of the prayers that, that, um, that, that was prayed. And you know, when you, when you pray, you got to make sure that the people that's praying with you are believers. Everybody's got to be with one accord and we got to be in a likeness. Hallelujah. Because if you praying with somebody and they in disbelief, we need to disconnect our hands because we don't need to uh, be connected because you're in disbelief. Please remove yourself from this post and respect our believers. Thank you. He's been banded. Uh, I think Tim one took care of that. Everyone has their own beliefs. Your uh, comments is very disrespectful. Thank you, missionary, uh, because we got to stand together and we got to stand up for this word of God. And let me encourage you. Let's talk about this, because when we go out, the devil is out just like we are. And when we go out to minister this word of God, look at Stephen. They killed him for the word of God. And Stephen is a person in the Bible. And I didn't know he was in there, I think, till last year. But he was killed for the word of God. Now, what am I saying? When you go out and teach the word of God and you teach in truth, the devil don't like that. So he's got workers that he's working through as well. And that's spiritual wickedness in high places, which means he going to come down and use whoever he will uh, and want to that that's opening a door for him to use to come against you. Why? Because he don't want you to hear the word of God. He don't want you to know truth. He wants you to be distracted with what's right in front of you. He wants you to miss heaven. Now the devil that that, that, that is being used wants to distract the word of God wants to come against the word of God because anything that's against Christ is anti-Christ and we have this everywhere and we must be a light people in a dark place and we must let people know how God is soon to come and that all those that forget God all those that are not living for God that don't want to come in and live for him now will be bowing their knees later and will confess but your confession is going to be at a point of being too late but you will be cast in a lake of fire in eternal damnation that will be burning forever and ever and there is only one way into hell there is no way out this is why we are making the cry out loud now and the sound and the trumpet and the alarms because we are in the times where God could come at any point and crack the sky and he could call his children to come home. He could say, go get them and rapture us up. But when we, when he rapture us up, all you'll see left now is videos uh, of, of holiness. And when people uh, are teaching and preaching the word of God, the uncut word of God. But if you don't come in now, if you don't pay attention to the signs outside, we look at this weather. God, the, the, we're in revelation. This Bible's fulfilling itself. I mean, just, just read the word of God. Get this for yourself. And if you haven't tried Jesus, I dare you to try him. Hallelujah. I dare you to give him a chance and I dare you to, 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 to seek him and to see um, that, that he is real, that he is all and that he's everything that we'll ever need to be and that you must be filled with Holy Ghost in order for you to get up out that grave if you're already dead or to be caught up or to, 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 to hear that, which is to hear that sound of the trumpet. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. But when the trumpet sounds, what position are you going to be in? Where will you be? If you're in the club and it's 12 o'clock at night or wherever you're supposed to be, that you're not, that you're in the wrong spot. Because if you're in the club, you're in the wrong place. Let me tell you, baby. Because if you're saying you're going in there to minister to people, God is not going to send you to the club to minister to nobody for you to be going inside and enjoying drinks. He told, if you outside, ministering and you across the street and you making a sound and you are sounding along God is decent and in order but if you in the club and you in it's, in, in, it's midnight it's 12 o'clock at night and the trumpet sounds where will you appear when God comes to get his people you're going to be left behind and everybody in there going to be still drunk and staggered and just dancing doesn't miss the sound of God doesn't miss the trumpet sound you done missed your ride because when the, when, the, when the conductor says all aboard if you not on this train you done missed your ride and this train is not coming back to pick you up it's a one ride and one time and you must have a ticket what the ticket of salvation the ticket of holiness and you must be ready to go and everything that you have that means your spirit your your, your soul all of you must be together and in order to get this ticket to get on board not anybody just gonna ride on this train like the song say this this train don't carry no smokers this this train don't carry no jokers 
This train is not going to carry no liars. Hallelujah. And no backbiters. Hallelujah. And we got to be ready and we got to keep ourselves ready at all times because we never know when the day or the hour is going to come that the conductor is going to get up and say all aboard or that trumpet is being sound. We must live by faith. Faith in God that he is going to come get us and he's going to come get us before we have to go through all these things that we didn't, that he doesn't want us to go to. We're supposed to come get the very elect. What is the elect? Those of us that choose God, that believes in God, that is holding on to God by faith and knowing that God is going to come for his children. Now, yes, all souls are God's. But like I said, the ones that are choosing to sin are the souls that's going to die and be cast in an eternal lake of fire. Hallelujah. And brimstone. And you're not going to get out. This is why we cry out for you now. Because the devil knows that you have a chance to make it into heaven. He has no chance. He will never get back to God because he didn't do right when he was up there the first time. And God cast him out. Now, if God has a rule in heaven and he cast Satan out, what do you think? he'll do to you with your ungodly self that don't want to live right we got to come to God and live for him and if we living for him we can't live for God part time there is no part time lover around here I don't know about you but I wouldn't want a part time husband I love myself too much to be in relationship with somebody that just loved me only on the day on the weekend and see this world is so twisted and and, and, and tied up and tangled up and, 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 and sin today making songs about being the weekend lover and doing this and that. Honey, if you married to me, you married to me 24 hours and seven days a week. My marriage decree says that we are married. It didn't say that we are married in only Saturdays and Sundays or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday and Fridays, but we are married. So when you come into God and, and his lifestyle and you taste of his goodness and righteousness and you've given him your life, you are married to God 24 hours and seven days a week. There is no stopping in that. And you are to claim and profess him against uh, uh, the uh, uh, to to everybody because he's on the inside. If I go somewhere and I don't want my husband to go because I'm ashamed of him, am I truly married to him? Because if you married to somebody, you're not going to be ashamed of him or her. You're going to tell everybody about him because you are proud because you married him or her. And that's how we have to be with God. I'm glad I'm married to God. I'm glad he's my father. I'm glad that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And I'm glad about the Holy Spirit. And I'll tell anybody everywhere I go that God is real. Jesus is real. And if you don't want God, if you don't want to know about Jesus, I don't have to tell you about it because you really don't want me. And I won't have to share nothing with you because you choose for me not to. But what, just because I didn't share it with you don't mean that he don't live on the inside. Because he does live on the inside. He's fire. He's alive like that and he makes you he, he puts a quickening in your spirit hallelujah and he, he, he it's a, his page just moves hallelujah and if you really if Holy Ghost ever just really take you over and it's just it's amazing because your you, Sheila you your, your body begin to shake and you begin to, to feel it and you want him to do it again Hallelujah. And that's how great God is. The power of God, how he moves in the healing. And, and, and I talk about healing because a lot of people minds is so sick and they need a spiritual healing. They need mental healing. Why do you think so many are, are, are committing suicide? Because they think it's a better life on the other side. They don't know because the devil done tricked them in thinking that everything is bad here right now. But I'm telling you, you're not burning 24 hours or seven days a week right now. If you can hear this message, but if you kill yourself, and a lot of people don't want to hear this because they, they, they children may have done this. But if you are uh, on the verge of committing suicide, I encourage you to not because it don't get better for you on the next side. It only gets worse. And that's why the devil wants you to do that. He wants to trick you and trap you and, and get you to do something that's going to cause you to be burning up forever. Why? Because he is jealous of you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your word, God. I, I mean, God is just so amazing like that. And some people, and, and, and I was thinking about this earlier, so I got to give it to you now. Those of you that think that, 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 that you're seeing too much word. Well, us that love God, we can't get enough word. We, 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 we can stay at church. Why? Because we're going we gonna to be in his presence forever. We're we, we going to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And we're going to praise God all day long, all the time. Because that's what we're going to go to heaven to do. So if you don't want to praise him now, how can you praise him later? 
He's you, you can't just say, well, I don't want to praise God now, but I'll just jump on board and just jump right on in there and just just say hey, this. Thank you, Lord. Just shout right on. in. It doesn't work that way. If you don't like him now, he's not going to let you in there for you to dislike him almost and halfway up there later. That's the God we serve. It's either you choose him now this day while you have breath in your body, while there's life in you or you don't choose him and take just play Russian roulette. Have you ever seen somebody on, on a movie play Russian roulette? What do they do? They take the gun out and they spin it and when they spin it they pop it back in there not seeing what the, bu the, the, the bullet in the chamber is every day that you wake up without God you playing a day of Russian roulette and all day long you playing Russian roulette why because you could be going to the store and something happened and, and, and you die you could be in your bed and, and, and you could leave here you could be anywhere and you could be checking up out of here and you could be on your sick bed at the hospital and let me encourage you for those of you that are working in the hospital or in the nursing home God got you in there for a reason for you to minister to those children of God. It, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He used me in that way for me to go and minister to people. That was my job assignment while I worked at the hospital. That's where I met God and found him at again because I had already been introduced to him. I just didn't have Holy Ghost on the inside. I've been taught about him. I just didn't have him living on the inside. That's why I say you must come in. He must come in on the inside of you. But if you're on that, 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 that sick bed of that man or that woman, don't be afraid to, to, to introduce him or her to God. If they accept God, woo, thank you, Jesus. We just, hallelujah, ushered a soul right into his kingdom. But if they reject you, you've done your part. Don't feel no ways bad or funny about it because everybody going to have a chance. And God gives us so many chances. And he wants you to have a fair chance to make it in, even on your sick bed. He's sending somebody to you to witness to you for you to come in and to make it in. Hallelujah. And if you've never heard of him, he's going to send somebody to you to for you to 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 learn of him at the bedside. I'm a witness because it happened to me. I had to go and introduce God to a man. And I'm like, everybody know who God is. And Jesus, apparently not. He didn't know. But when that prayer was prayed. Hallelujah. That man got quiet. She almost said, thank you, Jesus. And when he got quiet, he went home in peace. And another soul, Mama Sha, thank you, Jesus, was won because of the obedience that God had placed upon my life that I followed. Hallelujah. And I'm glad about it because you never know when somebody will be standing over you. You never know when somebody going to be at your well, rescue and need, or your children rescue. You're going to reap that because you were obedient to God. Hallelujah. And there is nothing like it. There is no God like our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is of peace. God is of love. God is of a sound mind. Anything outside of that is outside of God. It's out of order and out of line. And the devil wants you to, 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 to fight each other, to kill each other. Why do you think so many people are dying on the streets? Hallelujah. And, 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 and our youth is killing themselves. Oh, God. The youth is killing themselves because the devil is in them and using them to kill each other so that they can wake up in hell. And he wants you to, to, to be on on these videos on Facebook where everybody turning around on the backside so that you, you can show you your, your backside area so that so, so that you can uh, entice people so that the people can get their eyes on that and take their eyes off Jesus but God wants us to, to, to look past all that because you're not supposed to be looking at that anyway keep your focus and your focal point on God hallelujah so that's the let's talk about it part now y'all have heard all that and God, God, God is amazing. So I have to tell about him everywhere I go. Y'all heard all this great word. Do a self-examination. Because God is so great. He equips us and he, he, he's, he's going to make a way for us to, 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 to do his word and his will. Uh, do a self-exam right now. And if you have some things in your life that it is lacking. Hallelujah. Praise God. And you're able to think about it. Whether it been what you call a little white lie that you told the other day. Whether it be that you've not paid your tithe and given your offering and, and, and loved your brother and sister like God told you to love them. Whether it be you just been slacking off on the relationship that you have with God. Whether it be that you've placed God and the things that he can do in a box and placed him on a shelf in storage and, and just and only try to bring him out for certain things or when you need him. Whatever it is that you have done, 
If you find yourself in this area and you need to fix these things, now is the time. I encourage you, brothers and sisters, to pray this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you, God, humble as children, humble as we know how, God, asking you for mercy and grace, God, and thanking you, God, for another day, Lord, another day on this journey. And now, Lord, I ask you to just help us to know what you need us to know, God, and give us strength, Lord, on our daily journey, God, and help us to... to, to Hallelujah. To withstand, Lord, these tests and trials on this daily thing that we call life. Now, Lord, I ask that you just cover and protect us, Lord, the more, Lord. Give us a quickening in our spirit, God, for us to, to be hungry for the word, to be thirsty for the word, to be seeking you diligently, God, in every area, not some areas in our lives, but every area, God. And Lord, if they put you in a box, God, I ask that you just help them to do a self-examination with whatever area, God, and help them to fix it, God, right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, getting a closer relationship to you, God, a closer walk with thee, Lord, and Lord, if they have never met Jesus and hadn't believed in your son, now that they are hearing the word of God, they prayed the prayer, Father, I believe in your son, Jesus, I believe that he came here to die for the sins of the world and that you raised him again on the third day. And he now sits at the right hand of you, God. And Lord, now fill me with the Holy Ghost. Help me to see the real. Give me a 2020 vision for, for this season, God, and every season, Lord. And Lord, help me to not be left behind. I want to make it in, God. Now, Lord, I invite you in into every area of my life. Lord, I give you permission to do everything that you need to do in my life. Take total control, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I repent for all sins, Lord, knowing and unknowing, God. And I I ask you to just help me each and every day in every way God in Jesus name amen all right hey mama how you doing I love you all right so if you guys have um, prayed this prayer you've just come in to, and when they said when you got to be born in when when they say born in it's like a rebirth you can't just go join the church and say that make me save you got to go through uh, believing what makes you born again is your, your new birth is believing that Jesus is the son of God you prayed this prayer you, it, the, the good news is you've just been born again and God is great like that it's simple it's not hard and continue to seek God and the Holy Spirit and ask him to help you and to fill you and he will do that alright so uh, I love all y'all share this video and spread the message spread God's word be a part of the move of what God is doing and if you have not gone to Sunday school I encourage you to get there start going uh, and, and start taking active uh, uh, approach to it and, and just to let you know that kingdom minded thinker I didn't put the slide up, but I, I, I'll try to fix that next time. Kingdom Minded Thinker is under the uh, Ministry of Faith and Hope Temple, Church of God in Christ. That's 3402 Ash Street, Texas County, Arkansas. Pastor Larry Benson Sr. and co-pastor Erlene Benson. Uh, and she's a, a fireball, great woman of God. I love all of you guys. And thank y'all again for being a kingdom-minded thinker in this guy's kingdom. Remember uh, Philippians 2 and 5? Let the mind that was in Christ, that's in Christ, to be ye also the mind on the inside of you. I love all y'all. You guys get into your word. And if you don't have Sunday school books, get you a Sunday school book. And if you can't make it to Sunday school, we have a, 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 a help for you there as well. You can get the Sunday school lesson online uh, uh, on uh, Thursday mornings. Uh, and if you want to play it for that Sunday morning, you can come in and listen to the word of God on Sunday morning. And if you just need a fiery burning word, there's word and content for you to find. Uh, hallelujah. And so you can just come in and, and get what you need. Because remember... Um, well, I had said it, but I'm going to say it to you now, and I'll put it up. Uh, KMT is a place to meet God, to change your mind, change and transform your mind one situation at a time. All right, I love you guys, and I will see you guys, Lord's will, next time. Bye-bye.